Beardo Benjo. Now I don't know if it's just me being a crusty old grumpy curmudgeon, but I think I might hate next gen already. It's not even here. And I think I might hate next gen already. And that's very unlike me because I always traditionally get very excited for new console launches. I worked for a game store for 12 years, something like that. And during that time, the console launches were my favorite part of working there. I worked the Xbox 360 launch, Xbox One, uh, PS4, PS5, the Switch. I've worked a huge amount of launches that were all exceptionally fun. And I remember back then when the Xbox 360 launched, for example, the only thing you really had to worry about was the size of the hard drive when you were buying your machine. So you would go in and it was, I think, either a 32 gig hard drive and then a 128 gig. I can't remember the exact way it shook out, but it was something like that. And Xbox One was, was similar, different hard drive sizes over the years, PS4, different hard drive sizes, etc., etc. This time around, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel great. Something feels off about next gen right now. And I don't know whether it's because I primarily play on PC now, that could be a huge contributing factor, is that I'm not engaging with that market as much anymore. I still play my Switch a huge amount because I think Nintendo offers something very special that you can't get on PC or any other format. So Nintendo still excites me when they do their new updates and when they drop a new machine, I'm sure I'll run to it. And I still keep an eye on Xbox and PlayStation because I do still fundamentally enjoy those products. And I probably will end up getting a PlayStation, that's what I'm leaning towards currently. But maybe because I'm playing PC more and more now, it just doesn't appeal to me as much as it once did. Or maybe it's because we're in the middle of an unprecedented global pandemic and that is having a knock-on effect on basically everything in the world and everyone's lives and new shiny consoles just don't feel as important or prioritized as uh, they would do in a kind of headier, easier time. Um, I would have probably focused a lot more on them if the world wasn't as kind of weird and messed up as it is right now. Or maybe it's because they're both launching at the moment anyway, seemingly with not the best launch lineup. You've got the Xbox consoles launching without Halo still leaving the question of well okay what are they launching with and at this point it seems to be a mixture of a couple of new games such as the medium which is possibly landing in the launch window and an, a reliance on old games that you might already own on your current xbox being better um, and upgradable and playable on the new system so Mm. And then the PlayStation, yeah, looks like they're going to have Mars Morales for launch, which I'm sure will be fantastic, but again, isn't is already not touted as a full game. It's not an add-on, but it's not a full game. It's kind of a, a bridge between the old Spider-Man on PS4 and whatever they do next. So the launch lineup for both these consoles isn't shaking out to be great. There's still no information concrete on prices for both of them, but I'll come on to that in a second. There's still no concrete information on a date and we're sailing through September now. It's pretty safe to assume they're going to launch in November and we're, we're two months away, which is crazy to me. We're in the middle of a crazy pandemic and it doesn't feel like we need this kind of big money expenditure right now and it doesn't feel like they're launching at necessarily the right time, for me anyway. And I've primarily play PC now. So there's a lot of factors that are kind of coming together to kind of impact my love for next gen and the way that I would normally react would be just elation and excitement and I'd be pouring through the internet looking at everything and I'd be saving my money. But something's just not landing right with me this year. Something's not landing right with me this next gen. It's just got really bright in my room. I just realized like it's just gone crazy. The sun is beaming down. Something about this next generation of consoles just isn't landing right with me and it isn't filling me with the joy and excitement that normally would accompany such an event and has accompanied such an event for years and years and years. This morning, I've just woke up, haven't even eaten my crumpet yet, it's sitting right here next to me. Yes, I'm from the UK, I eat crumpets. They're very nice. I don't have a cup of tea though, so I'm breaking down the stereotypes. This morning, as I woke up, I saw some news had landed on the internet that has kind of added the fuel to my I hate next gen fire. And that is the confirmation from Microsoft of a another next gen console that's been rumored for quite some time and it's been printed on boxes for controllers and things. And that is the Xbox Series S, not the Xbox Series X that they've already shown off, which is the, the huge black tower machine that's their next gen console. That's what's gonna push gamers into the next generation, kicking and screaming with 
10 million teraflops of power and, and you know the best the best that money can buy this isn't that this is the xbox series s now it isn't unheard of for a machine to get a slim counterpoint at some point down the line we've seen it happen pretty much with every console generation apart from really the switch but i'm sure we'll get that probably sometime next year you usually get an upgraded or slimmed down version of the console xbox one Xbox One S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4 Slim, etc, etc, it goes on. But this doesn't seem like this is that. This is the smallest Xbox ever made, is what they're saying. It's the smallest Xbox. And if you see it in the picture, it's sitting next to a controller, and yeah, it, it looks it looks really small. But if it's that small, it arguably then won't be as powerful as the Xbox Series X. Now they haven't come out and stated this as fact, but it's a pretty surefire thing. Why would you even make the Xbox Series X in its current size if you could already replicate that in a smaller machine? So I don't think it's that. It's probably an absence of a disk drive and it looks like it's a digital machine, but you've also got to think that the power, the specs, the processing ability of this thing isn't gonna be as good as the Xbox Series X. So if that's the case, Xbox's infrastructure now looks baffling to me. Because they're running with this, all the games will play across the Xbox family. So if you buy Halo when it eventually releases, it will play on the original chunky Xbox, the Xbox One S, the Xbox One X, the Xbox Series S, the Xbox Series X. Have I missed any? I don't think so. It's five different Xbox consoles that this is gonna run across all with varying degrees of specs because arguably the original xbox one the big chunky one isn't as good as an s and then an s isn't as good as an x and an x won't be as good as an series s you can assume and the series s won't be as good as a series x i hate it <laughs> I, just, I just hate it traditionally we obviously get to this point and companies will release a new machine that's better than the old machine and we all go forward onto the new platform and we keep playing. But I guess in an effort to kind of bring consoles to the point where PCs are at, where they become kind of a, not just a fixed jump in performance, but a kind of a slowly varying curve where different graphics cards sit well with different chipsets and processors and, and, and RAM. And it feels like consoles are moving in a really strange way. Instead of just giving customers and consumers a hard upgrade, like this is better than your current thing you're now being given choices about how much better than your current thing do you want to go. Now this is all speculation because there isn't a huge amount of information out there about the Xbox One Series S or Xbox Series S. I hate the naming conventions, it's awful. Um, all we really know is that it's coming, it's confirmed by Xbox, by Microsoft. It looks like it's digital. Um, I'll put some pictures up, this won't just be me talking, there'll be things happening behind me, I don't know what yet. Um, it looks like it's a digital machine and my understanding is that it won't be as good as the Series X because it's a lot smaller. Why would they make the Series X that big if they could make something that good that small? So it won't be as good as the Series X, but you've got to assume it'll be better than the Xbox One X. It's, it's just a mess, isn't it? It just feels like a mess to me. It doesn't feel clear cut from a consumer's point of view. And especially when you're asking for quite a lot of money for a new machine when currently the offering of games this Christmas that are going to be coming to these new machines is so uncertain and it's just so unappealing to me anyway this is all personal preference it just feels like another confusing thing to do just to throw it into an already confusing and and not very appealing pot I wish it was more clear-cut and, and when they come out and announce information about it I'm sure it will get a slight a slight bit more clear cut, but my, my understanding is, is probably that they'll come out and say, this is the Xbox One Series S, or Xbox Series S. It isn't as powerful as the Series X, but it's better than the Xbox One X. It's gonna sit in the middle, it's a cheaper price point, it's digital only, so you're saving on the disk drive, but you're not quite getting the performance of the X. It's kind of a stepping stone into full next gen, but isn't quite full next gen. I don't know, it, it's, 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 it's so confusing to me and I just want Microsoft to come out and say something and I'm sure they will soon and that brings me on to my final point another leak just dropped this morning prices and release dates for all of the new Xbox family of consoles now this looks like it's completely and utterly legitimate because Xbox responded to the leak 
with a tweet, which was the sideways face monkey. I think you've all seen it. It's a puppet of a monkey and he's kind of looking and then he's looking sideways and then he's looking again. It's very much like, ah, yeah, that's true. Now the Xbox, oh, I keep going to say Xbox One. They've removed the One. I don't think that's there anymore. I'm just confused about the whole thing. Xbox Series S looks set to launch November 10th for $299 pretty bloody good very good price there will be it will be i'm assuming 299 pounds there's never really a kind of conversion rate really for us in the uk anymore it's just whatever the dollars price is remove the dollar sign put a pound sign there a uh, slight correction uh, xbox uk just confirmed that it's 249 pounds and 99p which is nice not a straight 299 pound conversion there much appreciated thank you very much um so yeah 299 dollars november 10th xbox series s on the same day, November 10th, Xbox Series X will launch for £499. So a whole $200, sorry, dollars, $499, a whole $200 more than the Series S, which again lends credence to the fact that surely this isn't just a diskless, a disk driveless Series X. It's $200 less, it's an incredible amount smaller, it's white. It's got a big black circle on it. Again, there'll be pictures here. What is it? What's the benefit of going to the S? Or what's the benefit of going for the X over the S? Who is the S for? I have so many questions. And I'm sure we'll get the answers in the weeks to come when Microsoft start coming out and giving us more information. And I'm sure Sony will follow suit as soon as that price point's up there. We might get it sooner rather than later now because this leap price is pretty much confirmed at this point. When are Sony going to jump in? and announce what they're doing with their obviously digital version and normal version of the PlayStation 5, which for me is a, is a more clear cut and easy to understand way of doing things. PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 without a disk drive. Make your pick. For me currently, Series X and Series S are still just a weird unknown. And I just, I don't know what the benefit is of, of one over the other at this current point. And for me, the Xbox infrastructure is just getting more and more confusing, especially if all games are meant to run on all these machines You've now got five different consoles that are gonna play these games, play Halo Infinite at varying different qualities. It's no wonder there was such a backlash around the way Halo Infinite looked when it has to look or run at least well across so many different machines. It's, it's crazy. Rather than focusing on the next gen, they're trying to please everybody. And in doing so, you'll annoy the people that really want next gen. It's a strange strategy. And I still don't know how it's gonna pay off. That's pretty much all I have to say. Xbox One, oh, I keep saying Xbox One. Change your naming convention. I hate it so much. Xbox Series S and Xbox Series X look like they're launching November 10th at $299 and $499 respectively. Do with that information what you will. Next gen this year is not exciting me in the way I wish it would. Um, I love video games, I really do, but it's just not, it's not getting me going. Not in the way that it has done in the past. What do you think? Are you excited? Are you going to get an S? Are you, are you attracted to the S because of its cheaper price point? Or is the X still where you're going to go because it's the beastie next gen machine? Or are you going to just say, no, I don't want any of this because Xbox is confusing the hell out of me. Stop it. I'm going to get a PlayStation or no, I'm not doing anything. I'm going to play with what I currently have because Cyberpunk's coming out. And realistically, that's all we need right now. We just need Cyberpunk. And Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's really good. Uh, I didn't review that, but bloody hell, that's very good. It's a nostalgia trip, and it kind of shows that sometimes the best thing is a step backwards. We don't always need the bells and whistles. Just do the simple thing. Make it look nice. We'll have a good time. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you soon for another one. This was definitely a rant. I'm probably not going to edit it. It's a bit of a mess. Enjoy. I'm going to eat my crumpet. See you later.